G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for a, another look at this trade period. It's been a it's been a good one, I'm not gonna lie. I am exhausted. There is a lot of content coming out on the channel at the moment, uh, and I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun, but uh, geez, I've got to edit two videos tonight. I'm knackered, but I hope you're enjoying them. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be looking more at uh, a preview for week two. Obviously, this weekend, no official trades are going down. Um, we may still get more trade news. I'm really hoping that things don't pop over the, the weekend. Um, that force my videos to be obsolete, but we'll see how we go. So um, yesterday I released a video about uh, every trade that's happened so far, so giving you a little bit of a rundown of how things have gone so far and um, what the peak situation looks like and you know some of the reasons why some of the deals happened, I guess. And then this video is more looking at what could happen in week two, all the deals left unresolved currently, and um, as I'm recording this on Friday night, giving you an update as to where each deal currently sits. Thanks to everyone who's hopped on the channel recently. Uh, it's been a nice little period of growth for the channel. Still trying to get to 23K uh, subscribers by uh, the end of the trade period and you guys are helping me get close. So anything you can do to help out, recommend it to a friend, subscribe yourself if you haven't already, that would be much appreciated. Cool, all right, so the first deal that uh, is currently unresolved and one that has probably been the most painstaking is that of Asaba Radigalia to uh, Port Adelaide Footy Club, obviously from Geelong, out of contract. Um, as it stands, you know, Geelong have reportedly been a little bit uh, testy uh, regarding Port Adelaide's offers so far. So we know that Port Adelaide split the pick with Fremantle, sorry, they split their future first round pick for Fremantle, uh, getting Fremantle's future second, as well as what is currently pick 25 in this year's draft. They offered pick 25 to Geelong. Geelong said, absolutely no thanks. Port Adelaide reportedly were a little bit stunned. So much so that it seems like it's kind of soured relations between these two clubs uh, throughout this particular no um, negotiation. So much so that uh, the preseason draft threat has become a realistic one, but there's a little bit of a um, obstacle with that one because Port Adelaide, if they don't facilitate a deal for a Sava Radigalia, Yes, he's out of contract. He has to enter the preseason draft. Port Adelaide could draft him. But the Hawks are reportedly a club that were interested in him at one point, as well as Ben Mackay. Obviously, didn't really find a permanent key back solution this trade period. I don't know. Hawthorne's kind of a ballsy club. I wouldn't be surprised if they pick him up, but uh, they probably wouldn't do it if Asava really doesn't want to go there. So we'll see what happens. My prediction, if I had to offer one, is the deal does get done. 25 on its own might not happen. But I'll talk about uh, you know uh, uh, the deal for Dersma later. I think that could get Port Adelaide pick 30. Do they offer 25 and 30 plus something coming back? It's a little bit steep, but if 25 is that far off the mark, they're going to have to kick in something else. Uh, 25 and 30 is probably a little, definitely a bit steep actually. But personally, I think 25 is about right. But uh, it might not be enough to get this deal done in a convenient way, you know. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Either way, I think uh, if I had to back in a prediction, Asafa is definitely going to get to Port Adelaide one way or the other. The next one is Lockie Schultz to Collingwood. Uh, this one. One does not necessarily uh, it's not necessarily locked in it's going to happen because Lockie Schultz does have an extra year in his contract so they have the option for Emmanuel of negotiating a deal now or waiting for Schultz to be a free agent in 12 months time so Collingwood it was reported were uh, originally offering pick 19 or at least that was the theory that was what they were going to offer it appears Fremantle have asked for a future first round pick um, obviously the benefit of that is if Collingwood slipped down the ladder then that draft pick will be better to be honest uh, either way I think Fremantle is going to net more in terms of potential compensation than waiting a year, letting him go as a free agent. He's probably going to get banned too at absolute best. He's not going to be a player that generates ban one compensation. So Freeman will have some impetus to actually get this deal done this time. My personal feel is it probably gets done for pick 19. I don't know if Collingwood would necessarily go for the future first, but it could be either one of those. The Shane McAdam deal is also probably going to get done this week. I think the holdup with this is uh, it's twofold. I think primarily the Crows want a player coming back from Melbourne. The two players they highlighted were Tom Sparrow and Harrison Petty, to which Melbourne have said absolutely no thanks. Uh, but the Crows really come hard for Petty. So we do know that the Crows offered pick 14 and McAdam for Harrison Petty. This got rejected. So uh, I think the, subsequently the Demons then offered pick 34. Five. Uh, sorry, that's a future second, which I think will be around 35, just to clarify. Uh, their best pick this year, other than 6 and 11, is 42. So it's probably going to be a future pick. Uh, the Crows are adamant. Apparently, they want a mature player, but they may not get uh, that wish. You know, the, the power sort of rests with Melbourne in this situation because he's uncontracted. The Crows do have a bid for Tyler Welsh, who's going to be a top prospect next year, father-son. So future picks might actually be beneficial here. So I'd probably say a future second is about
about all that's going to happen. I do think McAdam does get to the Demons. We're still waiting on the Brendan Zerk, Thatcher, and Xavier Dersma swap. This is likely to be a player for player trade, to be honest with you, uh, because I, well, for a start, Port Adelaide don't really have too much collateral to try and get all these separate deals done. And Essendon, uh, again, probably want to keep their first round draft pick. Not that he's going to cost their first round draft pick anyway, but uh, Dersma's probably worth more than Zerk Thatcher, I would have thought, considering as well Dersma's contracted for a start. Zerk Thatcher had a pretty solid year this year, but I think this will be a player swap and maybe a swap of second and third. So one suggestion, I think Kane Korn suggested this. Korn has suggested that it will be Zach, Zerk Thatcher and pick 30 go to Port Adelaide for Dersma and pick 48 going to Port Adelaide, which could, you know, help out uh, Port Adelaide get some other deals done. Particularly the Sasava Radaglia deal, I think uh, I think there's going to be some change needed as well. But maybe Port offer 25 and 30 that they acquire from this deal. That goes to the Cats, and they send back Asava and a future second. That still is a nice little boost for Geelong. And to be honest, if he goes in the preseason draft, they're going to get nothing anyway. Uh, Liam Henry is also a deal that we expect to happen this week. Obviously, I think this one relied a little bit on the Gresham compensation. At least that's that's the line I keep peddling because I think that makes sense. Now that Gresham's compensation pick has gone to St Kilda, for, uh, they've gotten pick 21. Uh, they've got a little bit more chips to deal with, so to speak, in acquiring Liam Henry. So Fremantle could have picks 19 and 20 at the end of this trade period. Uh, obviously, required for Lockie Shules and Liam Henry. Whether they use those picks to try and trade up the order, I'm not too sure, but suddenly they've got a little bit of a draft hand back again. Uh, the Saints, are, in a separate article that I found, the Saints are hoping to get pick 39 as part of the Caulfield deal, which we'll talk about shortly, but it was reported as well that they're hoping pick 39 could be part of a Liam Henry deal. So I don't know if it'd be 21 and 39 for, you know, 46 or something, whatever Fremantle's got. I, mean, I can't even remember. Fremantle have picks in the 40s. I think 21 and 39 outright is, is a pretty big offer, to be honest, for Liam Henry. I'd expect to be 21 and 39 for Henry and maybe something in the 40s going back to St Kilda. So we'll see, but I, I expect this deal does get done. Then we can talk about Elliot Himmelberg. Uh, this one is GWS trying to reunite the Himmelberg brothers at uh, the Giants next year. This one uh, came out a few weeks ago and the, the premise of it was that the Crows would be open to it, provided they could source a replacement. Now they haven't really, because I think that was in addition to Burgess. So they have got Burgess, do they think that is a sufficient replacement for Himmelberg? They might do. They're also losing McAdam. But they did want Choll. So I did read somewhere that Choll, uh, them getting Choll was a key factor in them letting Himmelberg go. Himmelberg is contract. It doesn't mean it won't happen. But I do quote as well. I think this is Sam Edmund saying, uh, maybe it wasn't Edmund. Actually, it might have been. God damn it. I didn't write down the quote. It was either it was either Edmund or it was Elliot Himmelberg's manager. Forgive me. But the, the suggestion was that Elliot is not banging on his fist table saying, get me out of here. It's just, you know, uh, potentially there is an opportunity for him to go to GWS. So this one does seem like it could not happen, to be honest. If the Crows have missed out on Scholl, maybe they don't want to give up on Himmelberg. They don't want to have an off season where they bleed too many players because it hasn't been a great trade period for them so far. They've lost their day. Um, they're probably going to lose McAdam. They're not going to get a senior player, I don't think, from Melbourne. Will they let Hemmelberg go? That one seems pretty 50-50 to me. Speaking of Mabio Chol, uh, he is still likely to get to the Hawthorne Footy Club, although it was reported that the Suns were unimpressed with Hawthorne's offer uh, for Mabio Chol. Apparently, it was a future third-round pick. Now, the two clubs are a little bit far apart on this, it seems. Now, the Suns apparently feel... You know, for a player that's getting a reasonable contract, reportedly, they suggest, well, if you rate him that much to give him a half-decent contract, he's going to be a best 22 player. A future third is not good enough. But equally, Hawthorne will be looking at this saying, what, what do you play, eight games this year? And I think they already informed he's not going to get too much of a gig at the Gold Coast Suns. So Choli's contracted for another couple of years. That would normally give Gold Coast the power negotiations here, but it could be a money thing. If Gold Coast don't really want his uh, contract on their books, then uh, suddenly they are have reduced power. So I do think a future third is probably about right, to be honest. The Hawks are also in a tricky situation here because uh, they currently hold uh, pick 33 in the draft. They've got a father-son in Will McCabe this year as well coming through. So they need to maintain some points this year. So pick 33 for Chol probably hamstrings them a little bit in terms of matching that bid. So future pick's probably where it's at and you can see why they don't want to give up a future second for him. G'day guys, sorry for interrupting this part of the video, but I just wanted to take a moment in the middle of the video to talk to you a little bit about Drizzy's Athlete Academy. Now, we'd like to hear from those of you out there who are new to the gym and perhaps feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Starting a fitness journey can be daunting, especially if you're new to the gym. There's a few obstacles that gym beginners will generally struggle with early on. It's poor form and technique, not having a plan, and not knowing what food to eat as well. But thankfully, there is a much better way to get started at the gym, and Druzy's Athlete Academy is all you need to begin your fitness journey. Take out the guesswork of being a beginner and follow a program that guarantees results. Druzy is a qualified exercise scientist and strength and conditioning coach for footballers. One-on-one -on -one coaching with 
withdrews eat will allow you to ensure that you're training properly whilst also keeping you accountable and motivating you. He helps teenagers and young men try to gain muscle and strength, build a better physique, and feel more confident, energized, and motivated. Don't go to the gym blindfolded, take out the guesswork, and with Drewsy's Athlete Academy, you can make your goals a reality. Through True Footy, you can get 20% off on any of the programs that Drewsy is offering by two ways. You can either go to the website, drewsysathleteacademy.com, and when you check out, use the code TRUEFOOTY20, or you can simply DM Drewsy's Athlete Academy on Instagram, TRUEFOOTY20, for more information. Thanks for your time, guys. Let's get back to the video. Then we've got Hawthorne and Richmond negotiating for Jacob Kaczynski. Uh, we do know that uh, this one this one was one of the first trade requests, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, but either way, the Hawks did want pick 28 from Richmond. Well, what, what is currently pick 28? So if Hawthorne hypothetically acquired 28 and 33, then they should well and truly have enough points for this McCabe uh, bid match that I was previously mentioning. However... I quite agree with Richmond that they believe that this is a little bit of a steep price for a player that didn't play a whole lot of footy this year, is not really cracking a game. And also Hawthorne only offered him a one-year deal. So a second round draft pick for him does seem a little bit steep. Richmond want it to be a third rounder. To be honest, I don't see the Hawks getting their way with this one. Pick 28 is uh, would be massive overs. I don't think Richmond will offer that. The deal will happen. It'll probably happen for whatever the third round pick is. Then we can talk about the Jack Gunston situation. Obviously, in a pretty surprising move, he requested a trade back to Hawthorne after a year. I will correct myself. In the last video, I spoke a little bit, uh, well, to be honest, I hadn't had a coffee and I wasn't really thinking properly. I relied on memory and I got this wrong. I said that Gunston was offloaded by Hawthorne. That's not true. They wanted to keep him and he signed there as a free agent and is now uh, backflipped. There's been a bit of a suggestion, you know, there was family reasons that drew him to Brisbane and perhaps they don't apply anymore uh, and he's coming back to Melbourne. I'm not too sure, uh, but it, depending how sensitive the situation is will influence how Brisbane handle this, and I think it will still be a pretty low-cost deal. Um, Hawthorne probably really don't have a need for Jack Gunston on the list. I'm guessing that he only requested this trade because Hawthorne gave him the green light and said, yes, we'll take you. I just can't see them giving up much for them. So this might be a future upgrade pick for Brisbane. Uh, obviously, they've got Levi Ashcroft next year's draft. I don't see this going for much, but maybe you know a swap of third rounders next year gets this done. Brisbane get a few more points and Gunston gets back to Victoria. There's a Tyler Brockman deal. I think this will get done uh, to West Coast. I don't think Fremantle's a serious contender for this. Um, Hawks reject rejected pick 44. At a push, they could ask for West Coast pick 37. They don't really hold uh, any real negotiating negotiating power here. West Coast have pick one in the PSD. And uh, at the end of the day, this guy really needs to get home. I think this one does get done. Even if it doesn't, he'll be taking pick one of the PSD. Uh, we've also got, you know, potentially pick one. Uh, and I don't know if this will happen in week two of the of the trade period. I don't know because um, for those who don't know, there's going to be pick swaps still allowed until like mid-November or early November. They're going to stop the pick trades, uh, put a freeze on it for 10 days, and then there'll be live trading. So right up until the moment Harley Reid is selected by West Coast, this, could, this trade could be on. Um, having said that, though, I will offer a prediction that it probably won't happen this trade period, but I'm still pretty open to it happening in general. I'm going to guess uh, at a few of the best offers. I'd say the Demons could possibly come at this with their current pick six, pick six and 11 and their future first round draft pick. Let's call it 15. So 6, 11, and 15. And uh, they'll get one and say 37 back. That could be a, a tempting offer for West Coast. I'm not saying I would go for it. Uh, then there's also you know the potential that North try and obtain Geelong's pick seven. Uh, I've talked about that in previous videos. Geelong probably want to split that pick. North Melbourne have a couple of teens picks. Maybe they get two and seven and offer that to West Coast. And two and seven would probably be more tempting as well. But I'd say that would give the Eagles a sneaky chance of getting McKercher and Curtin. So I'd be probably be tempted by that, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll move on to Elijah Hollands. This deal uh, was talked about pretty early in the trade uh, rumor period, if you want to call it that. So this one's about reuniting Elijah Hollands, who uh, had you know spent a lot of time in the VFL and obviously been injured a lot at the Gold Coast Suns, about reuniting him with his brother Ollie. Carlton are interested. This one hasn't been high priority for either club. I think they've had other things going on. And Elijah is also not necessarily desperate to go there, but there is a potential opportunity for him to go to Carlton. So it's reported they're going to meet over the weekend. It was originally said a future second round draft pick would be about right for Elijah, but we'll see what happens on that. I'd say it probably does happen, to be honest. 
Paddy Dow is also a player that is likely to move clubs to St. Kilda. I can't imagine this one doesn't get done. Dow's out of contract. Uh, the Saints, I think the difference here between the two clubs, Carlton and St. Kilda, is that Carlton were hoping for a half-decent trade for him, and St. Kilda, from what it was reported, were kind of thinking this would be more of a delisted free agent situation. So uh, I think this will be a token trade at some point, perhaps pick 56, if, if St. Kilda's feeling like giving... Uh, something up because it's not going to be a, a very deep draft, but I don't know if that will be worth anything to Carlton, to be honest. Then there's Nick Caulfield. Uh, this one is probably going to get done as well, uh, considering you know he's he's probably a player that needs a bit of a fresh start, and St Kilda is certainly handing out fresh starts left, right, and centre. Uh, but the Bulldogs pick 39 could be involved, is what is reported in the age. Pick 39 uh, originated from the Brisbane Lions uh, last year, got part of, was part of the Dunkley deal, and that is likely going to be the asking price for him, and that's a fairly good return, I think, for a player that hasn't played since 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Just a few players left to cover in this video. Massimo D'Ambrosio is also looking for a new home. Uh, he has requested a trade to Hawthorne. We've known about that for weeks. But again, I think the Hawks have been tied up with their own negotiations. It hasn't been high priority. Honestly, unless Dodoro feels like being a dick one last time, uh, I don't... Sorry, that was rude. I didn't actually mean to fire a shot, but he is a notoriously difficult uh, person to trade with at the trade table. So um, I can't see this one really taking too long, but he wouldn't be worth much. Julian Petrarca uh, is his manager, and he's, uh, he's obviously Christian's brother as well, just a fun fact. Uh, but he said the deal would likely go down next week and added talks were progressing well between Essen and Hawthorne. So there is some dialogue there. The deal is going to get done. There's no way this one doesn't, and uh, failing that, it will just be preseason draft or the listed free agent. So not a big worry, that one. And finally, uh, the two rucks that have been both requested trades to Port Adelaide. This one is a bit of a head scratcher. Both ruck, oh, sorry, I should clarify. Jordan Sweet has requested a trade to Port Adelaide. Ivan Solo hasn't, but Port Adelaide are pushing for Ivan Solo. But Jordan Sweet, again, requested a trade pretty early in this trade period. You generally don't request a trade unless talks have progressed. So I'm wondering here, like, has Port Adelaide just sounded out put Jordan Sweet and then realized that Ivan Soldo might have been gettable and now is going for both of them, but might only choose one of them in the end? Either way, I don't think Richmond's particularly keen to get rid of Soldo, and Soldo's interested, but I believe he's contracted, so I think Port Adelaide's more likely to get sweet. Soldo stays at Richmond, um, but who knows? That one's a little bit hard to read. But anyway, guys, those are the predictions of what I think will happen in week two, and to be honest, there's probably heaps that I've missed. A, I probably forgot it. This is I tried to be as compre uh, comprehensive as possible. And uh, secondly, you know, we always, well, we often see these last minute trade deals happen, um, particularly in the last hour. I remember well, back in like 2019, 2020, there was a particularly juicy one where you just saw heaps of random ones like H to Fremantle happened, Aiden Bonner went to North Melbourne, like really random stuff. Might not happen again that, in that way, but you know, one that comes to mind is like Jeremy Sharp. Does he go to Fremantle? You know, we've just not heard anything about that. But anyway, guys, I welcome your thoughts and comments in the comments section below. Hope you're enjoying the content. Let me know if uh, for any ideas that you want me to do videos on. I'm thinking of, you know, doing some draft stuff more immediately after the trade period ends. Uh, so for now, that's probably going to be the flow of the content. But appreciate all your support. Hope you're enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.